Let's look at this cycle focusing on individual components to ensure you understand it completely. Let's focus on aortic pressure. So during the cardiac cycle, aortic pressure fluctuates as follows. We have the first phase, ventricular systole, or the ejection phase. As the left ventricle contracts, pressure within it rises sharply, exceeding the pressure in the aorta, leading to the opening of the aortic valve. Blood is ejected from the left ventricle into the aorta, causing a rise in aortic pressure. This results in the peak pressure during the cycle, known as systolic pressure. Ah. So the second phase is early diastole, or isovolumetric relaxation. After ventricular systole, the ventricles begin to relax and the aortic valve closes as ventricular pressure falls below aortic pressure. However, the aorta, being elastic, maintains a high pressure despite the closure of the aortic valve due to the recoil of its walls, which propels the blood forward into the systemic circulation. And the final phase is late diastole. The aortic pressure continues to decrease gradually as blood moves into the systemic circulation and the heart is in the diastolic phase, the slowest pressure reached just before the ventricular contraction begins again, known as diastolic pressure. In summary, the aortic pressure curve would show a sharp increase during ventricular ejection, a peak corresponding to systolic pressure, followed by a gradual decline to the diastolic pressure before the cycle repeats. Now let's focus on atrial pressure curve. Now the atrial pressure curve experiences several distinct changes throughout the cardiac cycle. Number one, diastole, or the ventricular filling phase. Initially, as the ventricles relax and expand during diastole, the atrial pressure slightly rises due to continuous return of blood from the veins. This causes the AV valve to open, allowing blood to passively flow from the atria to the ventricles. Moving on to the second phase is atrial systole. Near the end of the ventricular filling, the atria contract, giving an additional push to fill the ventricles. This contraction causes a slight brief spike in atrial pressure known as the A wave. Phase number three is isovolumetric contraction. Now as the, as the ventricles begin to contract, the AV valves close. Atrial pressure briefly dips as the atrial chambers begin to relax and expand again, leading to X descent in the pressure curve. Phase four, ventricular ejection. During ventricular systole, the atria continue to relax and fill with blood from the pulmonary and systemic circulation, which leads to a gradual rise in atrial pressure. However, since the AV valves are closed, this increase in pressure is moderate. And phase five is isovolumetric relaxation. Once the ventricular systole ends and the ventricles start to relax, isovolumetric relaxation, the atrial pressure reaches its highest point, known as the V-wave. 
because the atria are filled with blood, but the closed AV valves prevent it from entering the ventricles. And finally, phase six, ventricular diastole, or the early filling. When the ventricular pressure drops below the atrial pressure, the AV valves open, causing the atrial pressure to decrease as blood moves into the ventricles. This is seen as the Y descent in the atrial pressure curve. So in summary, atrial pressure increases as the atria fill with blood and peaks with contraction. It then falls as blood is transferred to the ventricles and the cycle repeats. Whew, that was a lot. But if we break it down in little pieces, it does make sense. So as we conclude our exploration of the cardiac cycle, let's just take a moment to reflect on the heart's diligent choreography, a rhythmic cycle that sustains life with the same certainty that Valentine's Day comes each February, brimming with heart-shaped symbols and sweet sentiments. In much the same way that Valentine's Day prompts us to express love and affection, today's discussion compels us to appreciate the heart's own expression. It's systolic declarations of strength as it contracts to propel life's essence through our bodies and its diastolic retreats. Moments of rest and filling akin to the deepening of bonds over time. The heart cycle is a powerful reminder of continuous passages of ebbs and flows that mirror the ups and downs of love itself. The love dub of the heart could very well be the I love you of our body, a message that's delivered around 100,000 times a day, to be exact. Proving that when it comes to matters of the heart, both literally and metaphorically, consistency is key. <laughs> As Valentine's Day approaches, let's not only cherish the emotional heart, but also honor our biological one, which endures through cycles of ceaseless activity. Whether you find yourself in the thrill of new love or in the comfort of a steadfast companionship, may the understanding of heart's mechanics enrich your appreciation of every beat it takes and every beat it gives. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the cardiac cycle. May your hearts beat joyfully and may your Valentine's Day be as fulfilling and reliable as the very cycles we've learned about today. I swear, your boy's a poet. You know, I should be like Cupid on the side. You know, I could be like a little Cupid. Give me some wings. Give me an arrow. As always, keep your head up. You're doing great. You're better than what you were yesterday. That's a lot. Learn something new today. Going to be a great doc. Sometimes you just got to hear that.